Coming up on this edition of Shelby This Week, residents of Shelby Township got a first-hand look into fire station number one. Election day is right around the corner. Here at Shelby TV, we have interviews from candidates running for office right here in Macomb County. Stay with us because we have all these stories and more on this edition of Shelby This Week. National Fire Prevention Week is observed every year in the United States and Canada. Fire departments across the country typically conclude this week by inviting the community out to an open house, which is exactly what the Shelby Township Fire Department did. Fire Station No. 1 opened their doors and greeted guests. Kids had the opportunity to sit inside the fire truck, Sparky the dog posed for photos, and the department took guests for tours throughout the station. One of the most popular attractions were the bucket rides. Firefighters took kids up in the air. The day was filled with a lot of excitement, especially for families with children. We do this, and, and like I said, it's, if it wasn't for our residents, and, and the taxes and stuff that they pay, we wouldn't be able to afford the services to the community. And this is our one day of the year, so they can come in and see what their investment is. And you know, when I look at it, it's an investment into public safety, and it's, it's their station, it's their equipment, so we give them a chance to come in, walk around the station. We have firefighters here um, that they can ask questions of. I know I've talked to a few actually high school students already about it and they come in and they get to ask questions and look at the equipment you know with the jaws of life what's that for we explain it to them and it just gives them a chance to look around at all the different services that we offer and it's a good and you know they have fun it's you know like open house anywhere is a lot of fun especially for the kids but it gets the message across this inside look into the township's main station allowed guests a little bit of first-hand knowledge when it comes to fire safety the midterm elections are just a few short weeks away. Here at Shelby TV, we have you covered on everything you need to know before you head to the polls on November 6. Leading up to Election Day, we will bring you information on candidates who are running in our district here in Shelby Township. Recently, the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce interviewed people running for various office positions within Macomb County. Each of these candidates were asked why voters should vote for them on Election Day. Here are the answers for the people running for the House of Representatives 36th District, a seat currently held by Peter Lacido. I don't care one little bit about the new democratic socialist agenda. I want to just find some common ground between Democrat, Republican, and any uh, independents that are out there and just get, help make Michigan great again. It was one time the greatest state in the country and now we're lagging in so many fields. I think it's important to use my insight as a small business owner, uh, as an attorney, to create a business atmosphere in Lansing where we don't overspend, we don't have to tax, we don't play uh, the pea shell game moving money around. We straighten all that out. So I guess that would be my main impetus to say that's why I'm running. I want Macomb to be the best place and I want to be part of that. On the ballot for Congressional 10th District is incumbent Paul Mitchell for the Republican spot, as well as Kimberly Bison running as a Democrat and Jeremy Peruski as an Independent. I think that we absolutely need uh, a person with lots of energy and very strong leadership, uh, somebody who's going to oppose special interests, uh, influence when it comes to policy, and I think we really need to bring back um, politics back into the power of people, and I think I'm that person. I'd encourage people to look at the promises that I made when I ran in 2016 and what we've accomplished this year already. We've accomplished a great deal. We've, we've completed tax reform, the first tax reform since uh, in 31 years. Steve Eisen was a rookie and uh, captain of Red Wings, and I was a whole lot younger then. Mm -hmm. uh, I encourage you to look at because there's too much talk that goes on in Washington and in Lansing, let's be honest. And uh, I think we need to focus more on accomplishments and what's getting done rather than simply what, say, what people chat about. Talking points don't move this country forward. We've made progress. I want to continue to do that. 
So I think if people believe that right now the system is dysfunctional, that this fevered pitch, the arguments, the anger that you're seeing on both sides has gone so far that people don't even want to sit down and help talk about the issues that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not talking about whether it's, it's the, the Kavanaugh hearings or some tweet of the day or whatever it may be, but the actual hard issues that we're facing. We have to start looking differently. The, traditionally, we've looked at independence being on the extremes, and now what we're seeing is the parties moving to the extremes and the independents are coming to the middle. And we need to get back to common sense solutions for the communities, for our communities, and represent the communities again. Running for the Congressional Representative 9th District is Republican Candace Stearns. It's really not about me. It's about the voters in the people's seat is really what it's about. For the past three decades, we've had a, a congressional member who hasn't brought back a lot of the tax dollars and manufacturing work to our community. And that's going to be my number one goal, is we're going to have a fighter a Macomb County native who's been here pretty much my whole life uh, fighting for those dollars so that we can get jobs and we can get infrastructure and we can see our community flourish so that our kids decide to stay here uh, once they've graduated from college. You can hear more from these candidates on Shelby TV or visit our YouTube page. The Shelby Township Clerk's Office will stop producing passports from October 22nd until November 12th. The stopping of production of passports is for the Clerk's Office to focus on preparation for the general election. If you have any questions, you can contact the Clerk's Office at 586-731-5102. Still ahead on Shelby this week, we wrap up Week 8 football. And the Shelby Community Foundation held their annual Women's Luncheon. And the topic this year hits home for a lot of people. One Shelby Township business has been around for 100 years. We take you inside the family store. Are you interested in taking care of a reptile or amphibian at home, but not sure how to take care of them? Why not adopt one at our Burgess Shedbush Nature Center? One-year adoptions are $25 for a small animal and $50 for a large animal. You'll get an adoption certificate and the adoption fee will help cover vet care and expenses for your animal. You're encouraged to come in regularly to take care of your animal. For more information, you can call the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center at 586-323-323. 2478 or contact them at Nature Center at shelbytwp.org. You can visit the Nature Center yourself at 4101 Riverbends Drive off of the Ryan Road entrance of Riverbends Park. Playing in their last home game of the regular season, the Eisenhower Eagles took on longtime rival Dakota. Here are your Week 8 football highlights. Eisenhower and Dakota face off in a highly anticipated MAC Red Division rivalry matchup. It was Ian Canelli at quarterback and he did not disappoint as he would take this himself for 45 yards to the end zone to give the Eagles first blood. Dakota senior quarterback Mark Toko back to pass, but it's picked off by Steven Nadalski. Ike looks to take advantage, and Canelli works his magic again, this time finding a hole and running for 73 yards to the house, giving Ike the two-score advantage. On the ensuing kickoff, Dejavion Stepney takes this return all the way to the 45-yard line in Ike territory. Dakota would take it to the red zone where Toko dives over the goal line to put the Cougars on the board. The Cougars back at it again and this time Mark Toko throws a 45-yard bomb to Brandon Michalak. Setting up a run by Jack Murray who punches it in for six points. The extra point was missed, making it a one-point lead for the Eagles going into halftime. Back at it in the third quarter and Ian Canelli just makes it look easy and he's off to the races for 66 yards to extend the Eagles lead. With the game winding down, Mark Toko looks to tie the game up, but Canelli denies the pass. 
A great game for him and the Eagles as they defeat Dakota 21-13. And while Eisenhower played at home, the Utica Chieftains were on the road this week. Here's Robert Gambrell with your Week 8 highlights. In Week 8 of the high school football season, the Chieftains still looking for their first win as they took on the Lions Cruz North Crusaders. First quarter, Chieftains with the ball. Zach King fake handoff to Christian Gegovic and makes a pass to number three, Shane Lutz, for about seven yards. With a few more drives, Chieftains are first and goal and head off to number two, Christian Gegovic, and he's running down the sideline and is knocked out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Third and goal for the Chieftains, hand off to Gegovic, and he finds a hole up the middle and musts his way to the end zone and scores the Chieftains' first touchdown of the game. Followed by a field goal by Marco Matowski, the Chieftains are up seven to nothing. But the Crusaders say not so fast. Number three, Dawson split, and he's flying down the sideline, and he's knocked out out of bounds by number 32 for the Chieftains. The next drive is a handoff to number 16, Kyle Turner, for the Crusaders, and he is gone. He scores the first touchdown for the Crusaders, and they tie the game with the Chieftains already up 13 to seven, halfway through the second quarter. Handoff to Christian Gegovic, and he is gone. Takes it all the way to the end zone to score his second touchdown of the game, and the Chiefs will go into the half up 20 to 14. With about six minutes left into the third quarter. Tie game 20 to 20. Number two, Justin Zumanski makes a pass to number three, Dawson Split, and he is off to the races and makes about a 35 yard pass run. Near the end of the fourth quarter, the Chiefs is up 27 to 20, and number two, Justin Zumanski thinks he sees a receiver and it is intercepted by number eight, Turner Tamati, and he says, nobody's catching me because I'm taking this to the house. And that will seal the deal as the Chieftains win this one by the score of 34 to 20. The Shelby Community Foundation hosted their annual women's luncheon, and the theme this year has affected many people and families in our local area. We're gonna have a wonderful luncheon supplied by Cherry Creek here. It's a sit down uh, lunch. Uh, we also have vendor shopping in this room right now, and uh, we have a lot of wonderful vendors uh, that are uh, here. Uh, we will have a guest speaker at 12.15 talk about the opioid epidemic, that is Judge Linda Davis. And uh, we also have uh, uh, Dr. Anthony Colucci that will talk about how addiction affects the body. It is so important today to have everyone here to learn about the opioid epidemic and how it's affecting our community and also to learn about addiction and how it affects the body. The opioid epidemic is a big thing that is happening now. It is affecting a lot of people. Uh, you know, they take drugs for a certain condition, but then they become addicted to it. And uh, it only takes like five, four days of being on an opioid to uh, you know, start an addiction problem. We will be giving out grants, and that is the best part. All the work, you know, sometimes I get tired of all the work, but I love giving out money. So this year we are giving out totally to four different organizations, $7,500. One local store celebrated a big milestone this year. Shelby TV's Kyle Warzabach takes us inside this family-run business. 100 years ago, Marceline Baynar, a Polish immigrant, came from humble beginnings and opened his own store in a thriving Hamtramck area. Hamtramck at that time was a booming town, a lot of immigrants coming in, a huge population increase. He wound up establishing his first store in Michigan back then in 1918. He had at least three locations that I know of in Hamtramck before my dad moved out to uh, Utica proper in 1952. He rented there for over a year and a half before he built this building here in Shelby. And we've been in this location since 54. Now in its fourth generation, the Baynard family still owns and operates Baynard's fine furniture here in Shelby Township. However, they didn't always sell strictly furniture. When my grandpa first started out, he was selling uh, jewelry, religious articles, and music out of his backpack and then his first storefronts. Since my dad had bad eyesight, they soon got out of the jewelry business because of that and just was uh, running music and appliances in Hamtramck. So then he added furniture, which he'd wanted to do for quite a while since several of his friends were in the furniture business. And the decision to sell furniture proved to be a good one. 
all because they remain competitive by sticking to their niche. I think our, our niche is just in the, the quality products that we purchase. Uh, my husband is so good also in this generation to, to bring just unique pieces. We have a lot of really unique wood accent pieces that people come in and just fall for. <laughs> um, you're getting that personalized service, which, you know, sometimes today it's not that way. You know, it's sometimes lacking. But at the end of the day, it's all about reputation. But I think you can ask just about anybody in this area that's been here a while what kind of reputation we have. And I think it's very good. I think it's because we earned it. For more info on Baynars Fine Furniture, head to Baynars.com. For Shelby This Week, I'm Kyle Orzabach. And to hear more about the story of the Baynars Fine Furniture, you can visit our YouTube page where we have a more in-depth interview with the family. One, two, three, and just like that, another Tim Hortons opens in Shelby Township. Located on Van Dyke, just north of 23 Mile, this new store has been open for just about a month. But with the ribbon cutting, they were properly welcomed in Shelby Township. Leading the grand opening ceremony was the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce. An acapella group from Rochester College sang three songs and even Tim Hortons executives helped cut the ribbon. For owner Ravinder Sinani, this location marks his second year in Shelby Township. He also owns the Tim Hortons on 21 Mile in Van Dyke. We always love seeing businesses like this open up in our region, especially a business like Tim Hortons and this one in particular because they're really, really engaged in the community. They do a lot of give back and we really like to see that in our members and in the businesses that locate here. Also, I mean, we love coffee shops because, you know, they do provide a wonderful place for businesses to meet when they need to do something out of the office. So we're really excited about them being here and we're really excited today to be able to cut the ribbon on, on the Tim Hortons here in Shelby Township. The Tim Tim Horton's brand as a whole focuses on community, giving back, and special event days like Camp Day, which provides children across the country with the funds to attend summer camp. For Township Supervisor Rick Stathakis, another Tim Hortons needs more community support and involvement. It's not just a business. This is a, an owner. Revender's an owner who does a lot with uh, community. He believes in community involvement. Um, I know he's got a big, big initiative every single year with the children's camp, the Tim, Tim Hortons Children's Camp. He does a great job for that. And obviously this is his second location now here in Shelby Township. So we're really happy he's here. And, um, you know, somebody told me you can't have enough coffee in Shelby Township. Well, we have a lot of coffee, but there's something special about him. And while there may be a Tim Hortons just down the road for Ravinder, this new location provides him with an opportunity to reach more of the residents. We wanted to expand our operations and, uh, you know, one of our intent and goal was to within four or five miles of our residents and the community we live and serve. And so this happened to be the perfect spot. And also the township was trying to, you know, change the image of this site and this happened to be a great site and so we're sincerely thankful to the Shelby Township uh, for the great support from the community, from the local officials and so on and so forth. Be sure to stop in the new location to say hello. They're open every day from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. The third annual Bewitched and Bedazzled event is on Thursday, October 18th. This event supports the Meadowbrook Theater Guild, which supports the nonprofit theater located on Oakland University's campus. Bewitched and Bedazzled is right in your own backyard, so it's very convenient to attend. So we're bringing it to Shelby to kind of enlighten people uh, in our area about the theater, get them to attend the theater, but in a really fun way. So um, this event is a lot of witches. We have all, almost 500 women that will be attending this. There's some men too. Um, actually, we have uh, Rick Stathakis, our supervisor, will be um, uh, welcoming everybody from uh, the group to Shelby Township, so we're excited to have him. We've got a lot of sponsorship and a lot of support from Shelby and the surrounding areas. It is highly encouraged you dress up in your best witch costume. At the event, there will be a lot of vendors for shopping as well. Every guest will also get lunch and a special musical performance. The event will be held at Palazzo Grande. Doors open for shopping at 9.30 a.m. and shopping will continue until 3 p.m.
Tickets are $50 per person and they directly benefit Meadowbrook Theater. For more information about the event, including where to purchase tickets, visit MeadowbrookTheaterGuild.com. Coming up next, volunteers are needed to wrap library books and Shelby Township has two important events to recognize veterans. We have the details on both so you can get involved. The kitchen can be a dangerous place. Please stay in the kitchen when cooking on a stovetop. Please keep children at least three feet away from a hot stove. Never leave children alone in a room with a lit candle as they could get burned or cause a fire. It's a good idea to check your smoke detectors often, once a month. These simple tips can go a long way in keeping your family safe. Volunteers are needed to prepare for this annual holiday sale at the Shelby Township Library. The book bundle sale will be here before we know it, and to prepare, the friends of the library are asking for volunteers to sign up and wrap the bundles. Every year, the sale brings in a lot of money for the Friends of the Library, which is a nonprofit support organization. They help the library with funds and volunteer services. There are several days which the wrapping will take place. If you would like to volunteer, you can stop by the library or give them a call at 586-739-7414. The Shelby Township Community Foundation, along with the Shelby Township Police Department, will host Shred Day. Residents are invited to bring their sensitive documents to the municipal grounds on October 20th. All paper will be properly disposed and recycled. The event will go from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. on the municipal grounds. This is free for residents of Shelby Township. If you have any questions, you can contact the police department directly at 586-731-2121. Recognize all the men and women who have served in the United States Armed Forces by attending this year's Veterans Day ceremony. On November 11th at the municipal grounds, local leaders and veterans will gather to honor all those who served for the United States. Veteran event coordinator Phil Randazzo is once again leading the charge on this event. Music Maker Studio will be on hand to bring live performances for the crowd. This is a family-friendly event and community members of all ages are encouraged to join in celebrating the people who have served our country. The ceremony will begin at 12 p.m. and will conclude at 3 p.m. Before the ceremony begins on November 11th, Shelby Township will host a 5K run. Good luck everybody, have a great 5K. The Running with Heroes Veterans Memorial Run will take runners through the township municipal grounds, including Maystacker Park and the lake. The course is handicap accessible. This will be the sixth year Shelby Township has hosted the 5K. All the proceeds generated from the race will support the Veterans Memorial Site on the Shelby Township Municipal Campus. Check-in begins at 8 a.m. and the race officially kicks off at 10 a.m. All veterans can walk or run for free. To register, you can visit eastsideracingcompany.com. That's all we have for this edition of Shelby This Week. Remember, you can always watch us online or on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. Rochester College was at the Tim Hortons grand opening. Here is one of the campus's a cappella group songs. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. I won't cry, I 
Stand by me. 